Hi team, this is Chris Abram from Go Math, here to give you another exciting MTEL Math video to help you prepare for the general curriculum, the 53, the 47, the, the 09, whichever MTEL Math exam you're going to be taking. This is a, an exciting time. These videos are help you get ready. Review a quick concept and then study it, practice it, and then when you see it on the test, you're going to have success. If uh, these videos aren't enough, you can obviously do the private one-on-one -on -one tutoring or you can sign up for one of the MTEL Math workshops in Harvard Square and those are fun and those are also a really positive experience for all the teachers that are involved. Um, and there are Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops coming up this December, this January, throughout the whole year and there's also MTEL Math workshops that are you know, in other parts of Massachusetts. So I do encourage you if you're interested in one of those or the, work, or the tutoring to contact me with the contact information here or just enjoy this video and let me know that you enjoyed this video by saying, hey, this rocked. All right, let's start. Let's get going. Now, when we think about slope, I want to uh, review the slope formula. So I'm just going to write it here just as a basic review. We think of slope, again, as a review. We think that slope is equal to the rise over the run. And the rise of the run often is the change of y over the change of x. And we get the change of x and the change of y by looking at two different points. And we subtract the first point. We'll call this y. We'll, we'll it doesn't matter the order as long as we stay consistent. So why don't we just keep it the normal way. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now what does this mean? Well. Hopefully, you're, you're seeing this in conjunction with a, another video that I'm doing. I know you are, because we're going to flip back to it. But anyways, when you think of slope, you want to think about the change in rise to run. And the change in rise to run is the difference between y2, y2 minus y1 subtract over, divided by x2 minus x1. And again, just to give you that visual before we go back to the problem, if you had a line and you were given, let's say, two points, like 0, 2, and I don't know, let's say 5 and 4, I could do this. I'd first create a table of values. Always want to create a table of values. Here's my x's, here's my y's. This first point is 0, 2. The second point is 5, 4. What is the change in the y's? The change in the y's would be y2 minus y1, or 4 minus 2, divided by x2, x, uh, pardon me, divided minus x1, so I'd get something like 2 over 5. This, is, uh, this has a 2 fifths uh, slope, or we can think about that, and the best way I like to think about it is I go up 2 and I run 5. I go up 2, I run 5. So for every 2 that I go up, I'm running over 5. Up 2, over 5. Up 2, over 5. And again, in conjunction with the video that you're watching right now, this somehow is going to help you and you know, make this more basic sense. basic formula, y equals mx. Um, this is, oops, that should be an x there. mx plus b. By the way, remember, I don't know if you remember this. I always put my slope in a triangle to help me remember that it's a, a mountain. Um, I'm either going up or down the mountain. If I go up the mountain, in this direction here, it, this means... Um, I have a positive slope, and if I go down the mountain, it has a negative slope. And then I think about my b as my starting point or my y-intercept. So if we think about this as our slope, we think about this as our start, or, or, or you could say, you know, the y-intercept, I could go to these answer choices here, and uh, I could see that here is the slope of... I'm, putting a triangle around the slopes of these lines here and I'll put a circle around the y-intercept here this is where we're supposedly starting and I'm looking for the equation that best represents this line well we just talked about how if we look at the line and just visually asking ourselves you know is it going from low to high because if it's going from low to high remember it's going up the mountain and that means when you go up the mountain you have a positive slope. So if I'm just thinking in terms of a positive slope, and I look at these, these lines again, well, if it's a positive slope, this line 
um, that would mean that um, answer choice A, which has a negative slope, and answer choice B, which has a negative slope, could not be the answers. And so just by knowing that, you know, looking at a line and knowing that it's going from low, that's low, and going to high, like as you, uh, you know, how we said earlier, thinking about that mountain, when you're going from low to high, you're going up the mountain, it's a positive slope, I could very quickly eliminate choices A and B. So I want you to use that strategy to help you. Now, coming up with, you know, C and D, there's a whole bunch of ways we could do that. Um, if I remember, and we'll talk about this a little later on, but if I remember that our starting point is negative 1, visually that's what it is on the graph, and I remember my formula y equals mx plus b, m is our slope, b is our y-intercept, uh, so in this line right here it would be what is our slope? Well, all, all I need to know is that our slope for now is going to be positive, times x plus b, well in this case right here, b is negative 1, that's my, uh, so it's actually going to be minus, um, minus 1. I could look at these choices and answer choice c and d both have positive slopes, but c is the one that actually has a starting point of negative 1, so the answer choice is actually c. Okay team, I hope you found this helpful. Just by looking at the graph you can determine if it has a positive or a negative slope. And if you can determine that, that one little detail, you're guaranteed to probably be able to eliminate at least one or two of the answer choices right off the bat without doing any calculations. Thanks for watching. Check out some of the uh, upcoming MTEL Math workshops, or uh, you can look at the, the schedule that's posted uh, in the upcoming uh, portions of this video. Thank you, everyone. Again, this is Chris Abraham from MTEL or um, GoMath.com. Keep on doing the math, keep on sending your questions, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, team. Here's a copy of the one-on-one MTEL -on -one math schedule in the fall and winter. Take a look and see if any of these times work. I'd be happy to work with you if you know you need some one-on-one -on -one help. And here's some more information about the MTEL math workshop. This is fun. It's a great opportunity to get a great overview of the math MTELs. You should definitely take advantage of it. We have them throughout the year. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Leave your comment in the box below. Have a great day.